to another A-Level Computer Science video with me, Mr. Goff, for MrGoff.com. This video will focus on assembly language. Assembly languages use mnemonics, which are short abbreviated codes that represent opcodes. This makes them easier to remember for a human being. These example codes here are the ones provided by AQA in their exams. You don't have to learn them off by heart, but it helps if you already know what they mean from the mnemonic. Where you see reference to operand 2 in these instructions, that's because there's two possible ways of referencing the operand, with immediate referencing or direct referencing. If there's a hash before a number, then we're using immediate addressing and the actual value should be used. If there's an R before it, then we're using direct addressing and the value in that register number should be used. Let's take a look at each of these commands in more detail. Values that are in memory that are going to be used in calculations need to be loaded into the registers. Results of calculations may need to be stored back to memory locations. For this, we use the load and store commands. So the command LDR R0, 00001100 means load the value in memory location 12, which we referred to, into register 0. Now it's equally likely that that might be given as a decimal number, but just remember that when we look at the actual values stored in registers, they are always stored in binary. So str r1, 3 would mean store the value in register 1 into memory location 3. The first value you specify in an add or subtract command will be held in a register. The value that you add or subtract to or from it can either be an actual value or the value stored in a register. This is because it refers to an operand. Therefore, the command add r0 r0 r0, r0 which is a perfectly valid command, would mean add the value stored in register 0 to the value that's stored in register 0, so itself, and store it back in register 0. This would effectively double its value. The command sub r1, comma, r0, comma, hash 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, would mean subtract 5, the value 5, from the value in register 0, and store the result in register 1. The move command uses an operand, so it puts the value of a register, or an actual value, in a specified register. Some students get a little confused because it's called move, but if you use the move command, it really works more like copy, because if you move a value from one register to another, it doesn't get taken out of the first register and placed in the second, it gets copied, so both registers would now have the same value. Compare compares the value in a specified register with an actual value or the value of another register. The result of this comparison will be used in a branch condition, which we'll be looking at next. So the command mov r0, hash 5 would mean put the actual value 5 in the register 0. MOV R0, R5 would mean put the value from register 5 in register 0. It should be noted, even if it's noted as hash 5, the actual value stored would be in binary. So if it was 8-bit storage, it would be 00000101. The command cmp r0, r1 would compare the values in r0 and r1 so that you can check whether r0 is equal to r1, unequal with r1, greater than r1, or less than r1, so that we can use that in a branch condition. We're going to have a look at these now. Branching is where a command specifies a non-sequential line to move the execution to next. This might be a branch always, that happens every time that line of code is met, or a conditional branch based on the result of a comparison we've just made. 
Labels are inserted into the code at the point where the program will recommence after a branch. You can see in this example here on the right where it says B space loop. Every time you get to that line of code, if it executes, the code would return to the line where it says loop and start again with sub. Three lines down from that, you can see BLT end. BLT means branch if less than. So these are the conditions that we were able to check. There must be a comparison before a conditional branch. The values stored in registers are stored in binary. We're able to use logical AND and OR operations between the binary value in a register and the binary value in another register or one that's provided us an immediate value as its binary representation. If we used a logical AND with a register that contained the value 13 and another register that contained the value 10, then the result would give us a 1 only in those positions where both of the inputs had a 1. You can see the result here. If we perform a logical OR on the same values, then we will get a 1 in the output where either value in the input has a 1. So we get this different result here. EOR is the assembly code for an exclusive OR. It's also between the value in a register and an operand, meaning you could supply it another value from a register or you could give it a number specifically. Here we can see the result of an EOR where only if the two values are different will the output receive a 1. The NOT command uses the mnemonic MVN. It receives a value either from a register or directly with a hashtag. It then reverses the ones and zeros in this value and stores it in the specified register. LSL and LSR stand for logical shift left and logical shift right, which means shift the bits. LSL R1, R0, hash 1 would mean shift the value in register 0 left by one place, effectively doubling it, and store the result in register 1. It would not change the value that is in register 0. The command LSR R0 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 R1 would mean shift the value in register 0 right the number of times specified in register 1 and store the result back in register 0. This would change the result in register 0. The halt command is used to terminate an assembly code program. Now let's take a look at an entire program. In this example, I'm looking to write a program in assembly code to perform the operation to take the value from memory location 101 and perform floor division with the value from memory location 102 and then store the answer to that sum in memory location 103. It's not possible to perform division or floor division in assembly code. So instead, what I'm going to do is load the value from location 101 into register 0, load the value from location 102 into register 1, and use register 2 as a count to be able to count the number of times I can take the value in register 1 away from the value in register 0 before it becomes negative. This all presumes that my registers are able to work with 2's complement binary. With my three registers loaded, I now create a label called loop that I'm going to keep coming back to until when I subtract register 1 from register 0, I end up with a negative value. So we start off with that command, sub the value in R1 from the value in R0 and store it back in R0. We now compare the value in R0 with the actual number 0 and we've got a branch if less than to the end. So if it's negative we're now going to branch to the end. We haven't added anything into our counter so we would end up outputting 0 as our value because we couldn't get even one of the number in 102 to fit into the number in 101. If it's not that, we go straight past the 
branch if less than because it's not less than and we perform the value add r2 r2 number one which means add one to the value in r2 and then we have our branch always back up to loop we now subtract the number again and we compare it with zero if we're not less than zero we add another one on to our number and we keep going like this until eventually we are less than zero we branch to the end, we output the value that's in R2, and the program stops. In some past exams, you've been required to create a trace table showing the value of the registers during the execution of some assembly code. If we have a look at the trace table for our code that we've just seen, we're using the numbers 17 as the number stored in location 101, and 5 as the number stored in 102, we can see that at the start, we would put 17 in register 0, we would put one, 5 in register 1, and we would load 0 into register 2. We would now subtract the value in R1 from the value in R0 and put it back in R0, so that would now become 12. We would then compare the value in R0 to 0. It's not less than it, so we would move on and you'd do the add command and we would add 1 to R2, it goes up to 1. We would now loop back up, and we would subtract the value again. R0 now goes down to 7, we compare it, it's still not less than 0, so we add another value to R2. We now subtract again, and it's now down to 2, we compare it, it's still not less than 0, so we go on, we add another value, it's 3, we loop back up to the top and we subtract. It's now minus three. We compare it. It is less than zero. So we branch to the end where we store it, store the value of register two, which is three, into location 103, and the program ends. That brings us to the end of quite a long video on assembly code. Join me again soon when I'll be back with a much shorter video on the factors affecting CPU performance. Use the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise computer science. And until next time, it's bye for now.